Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2016 film The Void. And just so you know, since it is a 2016 film, I will be doing spoilers because it's been, you know, almost four years basically since it's been out. So spoilers. Um, although if you have interest in this film and you want to see this video, but you haven't seen The Void, stop right now. Go watch it on Shudder, then come back because it is available on Shudder when I'm doing this review. So I, because I do recommend it. It is good. So this was written and directed by Stephen Kostansky and Jeremy Gillespie. Um, Kostansky, Kostansky is most known for doing his films with Astron 7 of Manborg, Father's Day, and then he also did makeup for the movie The Divide, which is a good film. I would recommend that one. And Gillespie is known for doing Manborg, Father's Day, and then he worked in the art department for huge films. The Shape of Water, Pacific Rim, It... Chapter 1 and 2, Shazam, and the new show, Lock and Key. Uh, and he did visual effects for the film Mandy, which is also available on Shudder. Shudder original, or exclusive. Sorry, Shudder exclusive. Uh, this is technically a Astron 6 film, by the way. But they chose not to brand it that way because it doesn't have comedy to it. And if you've already seen this film and you're watching this, you know it does not have comedy to it. But I'm, I'm totally good with that. So the all their other stuff was more comedic, uh, which I actually have not seen their other stuff. Manborg, Father's Day, and The Editor. I do want to see those because I've heard nothing but good things. Um, but yeah, so that's why they didn't call it Astron 6 because it departs from what they do as Astron 6. So the creature effects for this were actually crowdfunded, which is a cool idea. Uh, from Indiegogo, they ended up with $82,510 in order to do their creature effects, and oh my gosh, they use that money well. I love, love the creatures in this. The design is great, the way they pulled it all off. The practical effects are one of the main strengths of this film. Uh, I, I really love that. So lots of people ended up comparing this film apparently to films from the 80s, and I see why that is, because in the end, um, at the end of the review, I'll tell you what I think this is a, a mix of. And you can tell me if you think I'm right. And then that makes more sense why people would be like, oh, it's very much like 80s. So Gillespie wanted to make a Lovecraft, an HP Lovecraft-derived film. And that's why we got The Void. Now, if you know that and then you watch it, you, you definitely see how it's very, very Lovecraft. Um, so, yeah. Gillespie called this production a nightmare. <laughs> And the only good thing was the the cast uh, were really skilled and good, and they were easy to work with, which I will confirm. I think the acting was quite good for this one. There wasn't anyone in it who I was like, ooh, you know, I was just, I was pretty happy with the cast. Uh, it's it's sad though to hear that it was a nightmare to make because then that means that they're probably less likely to do another film like this. And I would love another film like this from them. So hopefully, over a little bit of time, you know the. The pain of it goes away, and they are just like, you know what we should do? Another film like The Void. Well, it's a pretty messed up start <laughs> with a girl being burned alive. It's a very messed up start for the film. And you don't forget this, so when these guys end up showing up in the hospital, they're very suspicious. I think that's something that he did kind of well in this film, is they make you feel, uh, as you're going throughout the film, they make you feel very unsure of what's going to happen. You don't know what's coming next. You don't know what people's motives are necessarily. You're very suspicious of almost everyone, especially when things start to get going and and motives are kind of um, motives or involvement and things are kind of like very slowly revealed. Uh, it just builds more suspicion, and you're like, well, is this is this person bad or is this person good or is it somewhere in between? I don't know. So I like that. It's immediately obvious this black triangle actually means something uh, on the door and on the hooded figure that you see immediately. So that's kind of cool. It does convey the idea of some sort of order or cult or something like that. And by the way, I'm just going to refer to all the people in white with the black triangles as cultists because that's totally what they seem like. Um, I wrote, it's rolled from Letterkenny. If anyone watches the show Letterkenny, the guy who's the drug user in the beginning who is taken to the hospital... Uh, that's the actor Evan Stern, and he plays the character of Rold in Letterkenny. You know, it's interesting because I was just saying, like, a day or two before I watched this movie, uh, that he's one of the best actors on Letterkenny. And I was like, he does such an amazing job. So it's great to see him in this film. He's doing other stuff. He deserves it. And also, Ellen Wong from Scott Pilgrim 
uh, versus the world is in this. She's the one who played Knives Cho and Scott Pilgrim, and she did a very good job in this as well. Like I said, acting was good. They do a good job setting up the seclusion early in this film between all the woods that they end up showing, the empty looking hospital, and the fact that they're saying they're packing up, so they're even leaving the town. It feels very rural. They create a very good ambiance. Even the outside of the hospital, like when they go outside to, you know, go back to the police car to get the shotgun and everything. It looks secluded. It looks very, very isolated. And I think that really helps. You know, if you've watched enough of my review videos, you know, I really appreciate the whole seclusion thing. It, it works very well for me personally. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I did not see that lady stabbing the dude in the eye coming. I totally did not see that. Um, but that's a great thing. Like the, the twists and turns, the stuff that you don't expect coming ends up being the best stuff. Um, so, and it was disturbing. It was definitely disturbing. And then the fact that she was like peeling stuff off her face. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. It's gruesome and unexpected. The state trooper was immediately suspicious to me. That ended up not turning into anything, which is good. Um, I thought he was going to be part of that kind of cultist grouping because he, um, you know, asks for the gun. Like he, he does a lot of suspicious things. He's like, how many people are in here? You know, give me your gun. And he's just like, Ooh, I feel like he's setting it up so the cultists can rush in here and overtake everyone and, and kill them or whatever they're going to do. But that ended up being nothing, but it speaks to how well it was written to make you suspicious. The cultists that pop up outside are a really good touch. Uh, it helps with that kind of confined feeling because even even if they get outside of the hospital, they don't know how many of these cultists are out there. And obviously they all have knives or other weapons. I think there are other weapons they have and not just knives, but yeah. So that's very, very effective. It helps with the confinement. It helps with knowing there's a danger outside. So you just can't go out. When you see Beverly transformed, you know, this film's going to deliver. Because that reminded me right there of the thing. Like the way they design those creatures and the way that the practical effects look. It really reminded me of the thing. I mean, it's not quite that level because the thing is like insane and still holds up. But not far off in my opinion. And that's that's what pulled me in the most immediately with this film. It's like, oh my, they're going for it. I like it. So the guys just hacking at that creature was a bloody good time. Um, it seemed like it went on a little bit long, but I actually liked the fact that it went on a little bit long because it was just like excessive gore and violence. And, um, yeah, I feel like it just kind of fit with the film and, uh, yeah, it was nice. The red and white flashing light or the, I'm sorry, red and blue flashing lights on the cultists when they run out to the police cruiser and they're trying to get the shotgun out of there. And then there's all those cultists in the white and they turn the lights on, like the flashing of the, the, the red and the blue looks really cool. It's an awesome visual. And that kind of gets to the fact that the cinematography is really good with this. The directing is really good with this. It, it looks good. It looks quite good. And the costuming, obviously the practical effects I already talked about. Nobody would suspect the old doctor, especially when you thought he was dead. That's a great, great touch. You know, first of all, people aren't really going to suspect the old man in a hospital during this whole siege because you're focused on the cultists. And that's another great thing about the cultists is that they kind of take your attention away from where it's actually going. They're involved, obviously, but the main they're not the main evil. They're something much bigger. And so I like the touch of it being the old doctor, but then the further touch of you think he's dead at one point, but he's not. All the bodies coming to life looks great, and that was 100% my favorite scene. It was nightmarish. It was tense. It was beautiful from the standpoint of, like, disgusting, gory, practical effects. Um, that mu That's probably one of the things that was the biggest nightmare to shoot, in my opinion. I'm just guessing here, obviously, but the ambiance looked great. The lighting was cool. It was very, like, red and black and just... It looked amazing. It was phenomenal. And if people are going to get scared at any point in this film... That's when people would get scared. I, I love that portion of the film. I did not see the twist with the pregnant girl coming. I did not think she was going to slit her grandfather's throat and be like, hey, I'm a part of this cult thing, and uh, let's have this messed up baby, this like Cthulhu baby kind of. I'm just making an assumption tying it to Lovecraft. Uh, the scene where Carter has to hack up his wife is, is uh, kind of rough. But I will say I don't actually like the the story point 
of the um, the police officer Carter and his wife, you know, with problem with their relationship and having lost the baby and blah, blah, blah. Like, I understand it's about loss, and you didn't need that. Like, I felt like it was very unnecessary. And for me in particular, and this is just a personal thing, I hate when people employ children in films, not because I'm against anything like child violence or child death or anything like that in films, but it's because I'm against using that as a way to try and pull at people's heartstrings because I think it's lazy and I think you're using just something that you know like oh this is an easy thing to like get most people to actually care or feel bad or feel uncomfortable so I don't like that about the script I actually think it holds the film back slightly and the loss that was um that was experienced by the doctor himself was enough they could have just focused on that so uh, Final Creature is awesome, 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 outstanding. Falls in line with what I was saying about how good these uh, practical effects are. Um, and this movie's pretty jam-packed with craziness, and it moves at a really good pace. That's one of the best things. There are so many films, especially like lower-budget films, where they feel like they really drag at some point because they can't just like keep throwing money into practical effects and crazy scenes and everything. Um, but this movie, it just it moves very well edited. I like it. So that's kind of all I have to say about the thing. Um, I did quite like the ending, except that portion at the very, very end where Carter and his wife are kind of like in this otherworldly thing and they are holding hands. Like, I think that was kind of a dumb ending, but if they would have just chopped that off the end, I think it would have been a good ending. I enjoyed it. I love the music in this. Uh, in the beginning, it's spacey and a bit creepy. I really like that. It did remind me of the 80s. Reminds me a bit of the X-Files, actually, the music for the X-Files, so that was nice. And then it gets, like, tense, and it gets very dark um, when it's needed, so they did a good job with the music. There have been plenty of movies like this with people trapped in a building with a looming danger outside. While this one feels familiar because of that, it also has its own fun and its own twists. It forges its own path, and that's important, because I've seen so many movies that do the same thing, and there's nothing new. There's nothing all that interesting. They're just retreading well-worn ground. So I like that they did not in this instance. So for me, the film feels a lot like a mix between reanimate, uh, a mix of Reanimator, The Thing, and Hellraiser. Especially Hellraiser. I'd say I'd say Hellraiser the biggest portion, but then also Reanimator and The Thing because Hellraiser obviously with all the stuff that happens in the end. It's like a portal to hell opening and all the creatures. And the the Doctor, what he turns into, reminds me a lot of Pinhead. Um, and the Doctor, who turns into a Cenobite in the second film. Um, so yeah, that's very Hellraiser. The Thing, obviously, for all the practical effects and the creatures and stuff that it turns into. And the confinement. And then Reanimator, because of the whole taking science and working against nature to, to you know, uh, beat death in a sense. So... Uh, this is very much about how loss changes people and what lengths people will go to in order to have loved ones back if they see a way to make it happen. Obviously, that plays the most with the doctor who's doing all this terrible stuff, but it's also playing with Carter and his wife, um, especially when he comes across her and she's all messed up and she's like, but we're going to have a baby and, you know, all that stuff, which I did not like. Like I said, I was just like, we don't need that. So let's, you know, but it fits into that theme. Um, humanity has always fought against death, but there's no winning that battle. Yeah, that's a theme that comes up all the time in these types of horror films. And yeah, just know that we will always fight against death. And we do that in our, in our normal lives as a society, you know, coming up with vaccines and trying to keep people from getting sick and, you know, building walls uh, below sea level so that the water won't flood people and, you know, all these things. Like, we do things to combat nature and to combat death, and in the end, you know, we can stave it off for a bit, but we're all going to die, and we're all going to experience loss, and that's a little bit what this film is kind of about, and then the lengths that people will go to to overcome that and what that will do to your humanity and potentially all of the rest of humanity in this instance. So this is a good film, obviously, because I've talked well about it. So out of five stars, um, mm, 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 mm. so like I said, there's some things with the story I didn't quite like. So this makes it hard for me because I'm between like a three and a half and a four. 
I feel like uh, I got to go with three and a half. Um, but if I was doing quarters, I'd do that 3.75. And it was close to a four for me. So sorry, but I'm doing a three and a half on this one. But definitely a good film. Definitely one I would watch again and I would recommend to people. So good stuff. Put some comments down here. Have you seen The Void? What are your thoughts? Do you agree with me on things? Do you have other theories? Because I always like to hear other theories from people. And then if you could real quick, hit that subscribe if you don't already subscribe. The majority of my views are from non-subscribers. So I'd like to kind of fix that situation, I guess. Uh, that's your best way to motivate me to keep doing these because I'm just pouring my time into it and not making money or anything. Um, if you've already subscribed, thank you very much. And just hit the thumbs up to let me know you're still watching and you like what I'm doing. But thanks everyone for spending your time watching this. And until next time, keep it brutal.